Welcome back. This is your host Cyrus King. It feels like a long time since I made a video for this channel, and I think it has been a long time. I think the last time I made a video for this channel was six months ago. So, but I still got love for y'all, and um, I'm gonna decode the Avengers Endgame. Now, if you hit, if you, if you're here for my synopsis of the movie, like my 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 summary of the movie, click the link in my description. That's, that'll take you to my sci-fi channel, and I actually had a regular, you know, review of the movie, right? So this is not a review of the movie. This is me decoding the spiritual parts or what parts of the movie that could be applied to spiritual evolution. Now, when I decode movies, I'm not like most people who decode movies have this sort of weird um, theory that people put codes in the movies for people to decode later on. I'm not one of those people who think that. When I decode movies, it's because Venus, or what Venus means in astrology, right? Like, you know, Venus could also control the planets. It's a planet of imagination. So in a lot of ways, when you deal with spirituality, the reason why a lot of people cannot harness spirituality the way it's supposed to is because the imagination is not nourished. But imagination doesn't mean, because you, know, you know, you could say you have to have a great imagination, but they could go into fantasy really quickly. This is why the best science fiction is always motivated by science as well. That's why science and science fiction kind of propel each other. Plenty of scientists will tell you, you know, they, they, you know, they would see a, a show when they were young and it would inspire them to go to science. So just being in La La Land when it comes to fantasies doesn't mean your imagination is being nourished. But Venus is one of the planets that first starts teaching people how to deal with abstract concepts. Right, Venus talks to us in picture form, in music form. So it will only make sense that there will be a link between Venus and certain elements that you have to apply in spiritual evolution. So yes, you can decode movies based on that. But if you're decoding movies thinking, well, the directors or the movie people want to hide secrets and they put it in the movies, no, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. They don't do that from my point of view. Right. So when I, when I decode movies, it's based on that. It's not based on... I think that the Illuminati has some secret plan to decode, to put information out that they could talk to each other. So if you're here for spoiler review, click the link in the box, in the description of the of this video. So now let's go to it. And I would say I'm going to mostly stay in Endgame, but because Infinity War, which is part one of End, which is part one, which came out last year, because that they were both shot at the same time. I have to take some elements of Infinity War and, and put it in this decoding session, right? So the first thing we're going to do is start off with the Infinity Gems, right? So, you know, the character, the villain in the movie, Thanos, wants to put together these six gems, which are basically kind of like remnants of creation. And if you put them together, you could basically replicate the power of God. And he basically wanted to do that to rebalance the universe as he said so in his mind there was too much life going on in the universe so you have to kill half of it to bring balance back now first the six gems and if you apply that to spirituality this means the six elements right and the six elements is interesting because this the source what are the six elements fire water wind earth akasha or spirit and then number six metal right and that's the harder one to get, right? Number six is actually metal. So the sixth element, which is metal, is the one that's actually most tied into the gems themselves. Because the gems themselves, like if you really look at Endgame, right? Again, if you've never seen it and you want to see it, don't click on this video because I have to tell you what happens. Right, basically, right? So Iron Man comes in, he get he picks up the gems, he dies using them because they it kills him, right? Because he's just a regular human being. So even in the movie before, Thanos, when he had the gems, he was more of a god. He's really a demigod, but let's just say for now he's a god. So he could weld the gems without dying per se, but it even hurt hard for him. Because the gems are symbolic of the fact that, well, a few things. One thing that's symbolic of is that there's energy so intense, so massive, you have to fuse them in metal. You have to fuse them in artifacts. You can't use them in your human body, right? And this is crucial because in a lot of spirituality that we have today, they kind of 
turn their nose to the physical world. They don't, they don't have you respect the physical world. They tell you the physical world is just germs and bacteria and it's illusionary in, in basis. And what tends to happen is that is a very, that's a much younger version of spirituality that kind of manifested in the last three to 4,000 years. Much younger version of spirituality. It could be effective, but there are limits to it. So when you understand the concept of the infinity gems, that's basically going old school where you look at it and say, no, there's, there's going to be some things that when you're in the human body, you can't harness in your body. You're going to have to put in something else. That's what the gems represent. Definitely symbolic of the six elements metal because most people wouldn't get that. You know, most people, you know, if you look at metal, the way metal is described in the East, it's not even talking about metal. Like if you look in Taoism, I think for them, the, the five elements are, they don't even go to six, they go to five. Because they say air is so neutral, it doesn't even make any sense to try to decode it, right? So they will go wood, metal, but they use, instead of, they kind of use elements of, of air in metal, because metal controls the lungs. So when they talk about metal, they're not talking about metal the way in the West we talk about metal, right? So you talk about wood, metal, fire, water, and wind. Wood, no, sorry. Earth, water, fire, wind, and metal. So, but they, again, in the East, and especially in particular in Taoism, they're not using metal the way we use metal. When we talk about metal, we talk about the actual metal. They're kind of taking aspects of the metal element and fusing with air. That's what they say lungs control it. So, in essence, again, the gems being gems and the sixth element being metal, which is kind of sort of like a secret in the occult world, that's what that's talking about. There's going to be parts. And then that's why, so for instance, that's why in alchemy, it goes back to that. They would say what? Metals and minerals are the closest things to God. So alchemy will be a much more tangible science, but the alchemy is very old. So it will be a much more tangible science than the younger sciences coming in the last 3,000 years. And, and sometimes you say 3,000 years, that's even nice. Like the stuff that come out in the last 500 years, 1,000 years, kind of worships the abstract world. And they just say the world's illusionary and they, they have everyone jumping into the, into the abstract world, which is okay. But there's weaknesses with that and there's limitations with that. Not that the abstract world itself has limitations because it's abstract. It's beyond time and space. But time and space has the ability to lock you in. And if you don't understand it, you're not going anywhere mentally. That's what that happens. So then when you go into Thanos himself, we decode what he represents. I look at him as a mixture of, they put two concepts in one. So they put concepts of the beings from the past. From the old days, right? Before Atlantis itself. If you believe in Atlantis, right? Like if you know, it depends on how spiritual and how you come from. But if you talk about the Atlantean concept, you're talking about the beings from before, right? Who are before creation, so they want to destroy creation, right? So they mixed him up, because that's how he looks visually. Not saying they look like him, but he doesn't look he obviously doesn't look human. He's not somebody who, you know, when you see sometimes when they, when they discuss it when they do aliens and other shows. In shows, TV shows, sometimes aliens look like human beings. No, he looks obviously not a human, right? And in fact, he's a titan. You know, again, that may mean something slightly different in the Marvel Universe, but in Titans, I mean, they're, they're, they're gods, right? But he's not a human being. So what happens is, I think, when it looks at it, when you look at it, they mix the first concept where they're mixing the old beings, but they're mixing it up with the concept of some intelligences wanting to bring balance back in nature. So when those intelligences want to bring balance back in nature, you get, I guess, I mean, I guess in a sense, they will look at nature and look at the way the world is and want to destroy or replenish or actually, yeah, cleanse the life. So then that's why in almost every single mythology you have where we, we go through cycles and we go through cycles where the world gets cleansed and it gets rebirthed. So that's why like we look at Adam and Eve, if you really look at the translation, it says, it, it, actually, even in the English, it says, go forth, replenish earth, multiply, replenish earth. Like basically you're saying, well, the Bible had to start from a later point. And yeah, because every culture records the concept of earth goes through cycles and eventually she cleanses herself and life has to start over again. So they mix those two concepts up together in one being, which it's not, I won't say it's wrong, but it, be, it could be, it makes it very hard to decode it because that's what, and I understand, I mean, I kind of see why, because they wanted to make him a real, real villain, like not just a villain that, you know, you could just tell the villain just exists, 
to put the heroes up on a pedestal. No, this is a villain that was serious and a villain that every villain you have to kind of know why they're doing it. It, to, it has to be realistic from their point of view, right? So when it comes to Thanos, you can see how they mix two different concepts up together. And I can see also why, because then, because one of them is actually a real spiritual, I guess, I don't want to say intelligence, but it represents that, like a, a like a, an intelligence that comes from time to time and just re-cleanses cleanse, things again. And I don't want to say intelligence, I'm not talking about aliens, I'm just saying a spiritual intelligence that exists and is accessible in the minds of all, all, of all beings, right? And they put those two things together to kind of make him like a noble-like villain. So, even though I think he came off more noble in Infinity War, in, in, in Infinity War and Endgame, he kind of came off a little better to me. But that's neither here nor there. So then when you look at it from that point of view, when you go back to number six and metal, and you look at a certain type of spirituality that's very physical as well as spiritual. Like the spiritual, you know, the spiritual world gave birth to the physical. So you are eventually going to go back to the abstract world. Then you get the concept of a superhero. And if you look at superhero, again, superhero is just symbolic of the transforming individual. Now the difference again would be if you look at modern spirituality, they're not. Tra- uh, no offense to spiritual seekers, most modern spirituality is not transforming anybody. Sort of the reason why I I kind of have a distaste for most spiritual systems at this point, because most spiritual systems were created as a reaction to what was going on in the world. The world was getting was getting more materialistic. Human beings were more in balance. So then we created spiritual systems to try to reset that without understanding the first system of shamanism. Shamanism was harmonizing with the environment. That's all you got to do. And then the day, the imbalance comes in because we're not harmonized with our environment. So we're animals who don't know we're animals and don't know our purpose. That's like a fish not knowing how to swim, a dog not knowing how to bark. The dog comes to you and says, teach me how to bark. You'd be clueless. You can't teach him how to I mean, you, put, you might be able to, but you look at that dog as somebody in balance. If a fish tells you, teach me how to swim, the fish is going to die. Well, that's how human beings are at this point. We're animals who don't know we're animals. And yes, spiritual, our spirituality is supposed to help us go transform from animal back to good human. Right? That's why sometimes spirituality is mixed with morality into something new, into something else, into something more. But if you don't know the animal part, then the next two parts are not going to come in. So the superhero is symbolic of that. The real life, spiritually transformed individual. But like I said, not a spiritual individual that's obsessed with delusionary nature and human beings. Because the superhero, if you look at it, they're transformed on the cellular level. Which is very important. Because when I get into iron, I want to talk about iron later on. The cell... Like cells, again, gems or minerals, right? Minerals, made up of minerals anyway. And cells are basically the next stage when we went from non-life to life, right? Meaning freaking minerals became viruses, became bacteria and archaea. Bacteria and archaea became, which is prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells became eukaryotic cells, which are, what's a eukaryotic cell? Plants, animals, and humans. So that's our evolution. And... A superhero is symbolic of of a truly transformed individual. Now, of course, when we make superheroes in fiction, you know, science fiction has a lot of flaws because we're using the human mind to do it. So when we make make science fiction, when science fiction comes in, what does it do? Well, it it, it sort of just tells you the hero just got dipped in acid or (laughs) had a radiation and transformed. And they didn't have to do the spiritual. They didn't really have to do the spiritual part, they just got the powers. So that's just the human ego. That's why if you really look at it, out of all the Marvel heroes, the most realistic outside of like, you know, somebody like Captain America, which is still a drug giving him the power, but which which it could, but that's obviously negative connotations to that as well. It's probably Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange would almost be like, on a certain way, like in Star Wars, the Jedi, that's symbolic of how you want to do it, right? And if you look at Doctor Strange and his, his people's, they kind of like the Jedi for the Marvel Universe, in a sense. And they're actually the most realistic heroes of all. Now, now that I'm going into cells, let's go into a prominent part of the movie, the quantum, the quantum realm. Or, yeah, the quantum zone. So, 
when you say the quantum realm, you're basically just talking about the realm of subatomic particles, right? Particles that are so small, they barely register. So you're going to go below the atom. Why is that important? Well, in, in, in real science, we understand that on the microscopic world or, or on the quantum level, things operate a lot different. Things operate a lot different. So different that it's sort of a mystery in science. Why? Because the laws of physics are actually different on that level, right? Where in our world, the bigger you get, the more fuels of gravity and, and I guess, chaos energy that comes in. And so then you have classical physics then, where classical physics is for the big organisms, big objects, right? The objects that you can see. And when you go on a smaller level, things change in that sense. And that in the movie, the quantum realm was, I mean, that was the sense of the movie. That's how they went back in time. And that's how they fixed everything. And that's also symbolic of a level where spiritual, modern, keep, I know I keep harping on it, but you, know, you guys ask me, why I don't really make spiritual videos like that? And you see me make spiritual videos, it's on, it's on ATRs, which I'm just like, hey man, this is what I'm just trying to preserve those systems. <laughs> hey, those systems being forgotten. So I just want to contribute to preserving those systems because those systems are more, they have a role to certain tribes, certain people, certain bloodlines, right? But in terms of me just kicking spiritual videos like that, this is the reason why I don't, right? Because even in the best of you, you can go from even... I mean, even books written by initiates who know what they're talking about, they tend to be a, a huge focus on Atlantis, right? If you are, you know, I don't want to say serious individual, but for certain people, it will be a huge focus on Atlantis. For people who are more logically based, because you can't prove Atlantis existed, there will be a huge focus on Egypt or the pharaonic empires of the more modern past, right? But in truth, before Atlantis, before all that, before certain intelligences came certain intelligences manifested and taught mankind how to ascend and taught mankind how to take his electrical energy and i'm talking about spiritual electricity and combine it with his with his spiritual magnetism and use that to transcend it to ascend into the seventh dimension of death before that even took place when i said that we went from rock right to virus to my to normal micro like bacteria well a hybrid between bacteria and archaea which is we went from pro we went from mineral right to prokaryotic cell, which is microbes microbial in nature, to eukaryotic cells right. Before we did all that, and before we learned to ascend, what what used to be was we used to understand that the smallest things in nature, observing those things, some of them so small you can't see them with your physical eye, observing those things helped you transform spiritually because the smallest things were closest to God. And that's what it was. That's that's an old, I mean, that's a very old school concept that does not exist in spirituality anymore. Literally. <laughs> At all. That's why in alchemy, one of the most important things is, ferment, is the concept of fermentation. That's the one of the most important things. That's why even if a person is learning to look, work with metal or mineral alchemy, they got to go with plant alchemy first. They got to learn about alcohol, fermenting. You know, like in health, things like kumbacha and fermented milk and fermented, you know, um, mushroom drinks can kind of help you health wise because fermentation helps you understand certain spiritual concepts that no one would even believe they would. Why? Because it's, fermentation is mankind linking back to our super ancient ancestors, the microbes themselves, you know, and microbiology. That's why it may seem like it kind of goes into my superhero thing. In microbiology, if you study microbiology on a smaller level, bacteria exhibit superpowers. That's not Cyrus King being in space. You just type it up. Bacteria superpowers. You will see microbiologists, microbiologists is talking about the, the superpowers of bacteria, but it's on a smaller level in a sense. And when you get into the quantum zone or the quantum realm in the Marvel, what they were saying in the movie, yeah, it's symbolic of the, of the microscopic world. And the microscopic world has its own laws, right? And it has, and, and its laws are closer to the old laws. The bigger objects come in, when, when classical physics come in, it's younger. And not only is it younger, it's harder to transcend. It's harder to transcend limitation on that level. So when Ant-Man, who's a running joke, <laughs> comes in and, and tells him, hey man, I know how that we, could, we could change this stuff. 
right? We got to, and basically they get into his realm. I mean, he's one of the heroes in the movie, and people, you know, don't even pay attention to him because he's a running joke. I mean, they were making fun of him in the movie, right? But that's very linked. So the quantum realm, subatomic particles, is very linked to, I mean, cells. Like, so if you get, if you get a eukaryotic cell, right? A eukaryotic cell is much bigger than a prokaryotic cell. What's a, pro, what's a prokaryotic cell? Microbes. Eukaryotic cells is human and animal plant cells, right? And so even though it's much bigger, it's still the chain. So we go from mineral to virus to microbe to human. Or you could even say to animals. So animal, cell, animal and human cells are almost the same in that sense because humans are animals. And that's another hidden plug which teaches you, well, the smaller realm or the, or the realm of the subatomic particles will come before the spiritual realm in terms of meaning you go from physical, right? So you go from seen to unseen, but you go for the, the first unseen you, you hit is the unseen that still physically exists, the atoms, right? Goes molecules to atoms, they keep getting smaller. Once you go past subatomic particles, then you get into the spiritual realm. But if you don't understand that chain and, don't, and build a proper bridge in your mind, you don't truly connect to the spiritual realm. And that's why a lot of young spiritual systems have struck out big time when it comes to that. From baseball slang, they're batting 200. And so at, once we get past that, right, then you go to parts of the movie that I think is easy to people miss, right? And now I'm going to go back to even before I go into time and the two people in the movie who, who understood time. You could even say the three people in the movie who understood time. We go back to the Infinity Gauntlet, the first, the Infinity War, I'm sorry, the first movie, right? One of the gems, the soul, the soul Stone, right? If you look at it, what was, what was unique about the Soul Stone? The soul stone was the gem that you had to make a sacrifice to get it. And a sacrifice in the movie meant killing somebody, right? So in the Infinity War, Thanos killed his daughter G Gamora for it, right? And in Endgame, Black Widow, Scarlett Johansson, had to sacrifice herself for Hawkeye to get it, right? So when you look at it, you say, wow, that's kind of interesting. That's kind of that's kind of a vague, um, that's kind of kind of dark, most people will say. Well, that's going into a type of spirituality that because, you know, humans are no longer sham shamanism is no longer the premier spiritual system that people think about when they deal with spirituality and shamanism. They always knew that there's a type of shamanism you could describe as primordial shamanism. You could describe it as black shamanism. Black shamanism doesn't mean race. It just means primordial. You could describe it in a few different ways, but in that type of shamanism, you did have to make a sacrifice. Now, I'm not going to say to kill somebody. That's a bit much. But the sacrifice was, and this is the difference. So this is why when you get things like Satanists, when you get things like dark magicians, they're posers. Dark magicians, what they, when you say, when somebody says dark magic, they're not practicing real dark magic. They're practicing a, a replica of dark magic. Meaning dark magic, what they call dark magic, this dude, like in the universe, there's no such thing as evil, really. Right, positive and negative, yes, but there's no such thing as evil. So, the energies that people call positive, right, unless they make it up in their mind, which most people make it up in their mind. I'm gonna be honest with you, the energy that you're calling positive only comes to you when you transform, right? So when somebody says, "Oh, this angel came to me," bro, sis, ninety-nine percent of chance that energy is not gonna come to you if you're not transformed. That energy comes to you when you transformed. Right, so the energy that we call positive is energy that you have to be transformed and ready to even perceive. It's very abstract, right? And when we say the abstract, meaning it's beyond time and space, right? So then there's what we call the negative, which is really neutral. Those are forces that's easily accessible to anybody, right? So this is the reason why neutral forces, the uninitiated, they associate as evil, meaning. In Egypt, Apophis or Apep, you can, if you don't understand comedic science, you would, you would look at that. I mean, there's, I know there's people who, who have tried to resurrect Egyptian spirituality, but they're resurrecting it with a Western mind. So when you resurrect it with a Western mind, you're not getting that either, right? Apophis or Apep is a natural force in nature. It is. Apophis and Apep is what they started translating as Satan. 
that's a natural force in nature. It's a neutral force. But if you, because we are imbalanced individuals as a, as a species, when you go to that force, that force could cause imbalances, no question. So when you go to that force in your untransformed state, it's going to bring out disorder in yourself. And when it brings out disorder in yourself, you're going to, it's the, one of the primary forces, the primary reason why we're, civilization is where it is right now. But that's not the forces problem. That's the untransformed trying to go to that force because it's more accessible. Though that, that, that style of spirituality, if you want to even go into set itself in Egypt, that style of spirituality is more accessible than the more positive. And again, when I say positive, I don't mean good. I just mean the intelligence is that you have to be transformed. Your mind has to be transformed to tap into. That's the difference. So even if somebody says, oh, I'm going to take a drug to tap into that. Once you take the, the drug, it's the drug is still symbolic of a quick fix. It's still symbolic. It's still symbolic of a neutral force. And neutral forces in the 21st century, in the heart of the Iron Age, are what the uninitiated are calling evil. And it's not truly evil, but at this point, you know, even even when you even when you know it's not evil, at this point, you can't tell anyone to tap into those forces because you got to be transformed. You probably have to be transformed, tap into the positive forces first, then go into the neutral forces second. That's what it really is. That's why when you have even you know, when you get Christians and you get shit, even hermeticists, honestly, who would come in and be like, let's say certain ATRs like Voodoo and Obi, they'll say, don't mess with that. Don't mess with that. And then you get people who might be more into African consciousness who will say, they're trying to take our culture. They're trying to get us to stop kicking our stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. Of course, it's political. And of course, there, are, there is some truth to that. Right. They don't want certain people practicing the indigenous systems. But, it's a big but. At this point, if you're in the West and you're a person of African descent, you're a person of Afro uh, Latin descent, right? Let's just say you go back to those things and you start saying, I'm gonna practice them anyway. The danger in it is those energies, and I and I make videos in ATR, so I'm not even, I'm not even taking, I'm not even shit on it, I'm just keeping it real. Those enforces are neutral. So you can go and you can do them for good. You can do them for bad. Unfortunately, when you're untransforming a human being, a human being at this point is like a, like a, an animal who's crazy, right? There's no, re there's at this point, there's no reason why a crazy animal should be practicing those systems. This is why when a person comes to me, I send them to hermeticism first. They get some sense in their head when they go to the hermetic, when they practice hermetic and do hermetic rituals for five, five, six years, do tarot five, six years, then you slide into those systems. That's how it works. The positive or the upper world gives directions to the lower world. Positive forces gives directions to neutral forces. Doesn't work the other way around. Neutral forces not evil. No, neutral forces um, from our level, you can even make the argument came first. Who came first? The human or the virus? Man, Homo sapiens have only been in the, under, in the world for 300,000 years. Viruses have been on earth for 4 billion. So obviously viruses are, are <laughs> older. Well, because something's older doesn't mean it's supposed to be dealing with it first. And that's it. And that's so that's why I'm neutral when it comes to the Hermetic and Christian and Judaic and Islamic. Um, when they turn their heads on pagans and when pagans turn their heads back. I mean, both forces. I'm neutral because the same thing, but the same thing I go go with the Christianity. Like when people talk about angels, the concept of angels doesn't exist the way people are saying it. That's just like a recreated construct of a much older and, and, and spirit. That at some time, at times, at times, those spirits are actually harder to actually tap into and actually more dangerous. Could be at times just as dangerous as what the spirits, the forces that we're calling neutral. Because even when we say positive and negative, there's levels to that. So the better way to do it, that's why in Hermeticism, what do they, what do, they do? Hermeticism is kind of focused on elements. Yeah. The elements of the forces, and they're neutral too. But the elements of the forces, when you look at them as energy, not just the physical elements, when you look at them as psychological energies, they're the forces that at first a hermeticist taps into that, then they go into what some people call angels. If you at least if you're practicing Hermetic Kabbalah. Practicing Jewish Kabbalah or Christian Kabbalah, you might go angel first. 
So I'm kind of neutral in that battle about who comes first or what you should be practicing first, in a sense. But I do think the indigenous side has to come to the grips, especially if you didn't grow up in indigenous culture. Meaning if you're just some person who never grew up in this stuff and you just start to say one day I'm going to start doing some voodoo, you better be careful. Because, and again, I have, like, look, at, look at my list. I have like my last five videos in the ATRs. But that is a real problem that exists in that sense. So, and, it, and part of the problem why it exists because in those systems, they have a respect for the physical world. They understand the trees were, were the places we went to for guidance. The trees used to be our elder brothers <laughs> in a lot of, or sisters, you know, especially when you look at, when you practice a certain type of shamanism, usually you go to the mother tree, right? But the trees was the other direction. That's why even in Kabbalah, they focus on the tree of life. They may just look at it as a diagram, but before many cultures had their own Kabbalah, and every culture had their own Kabbalah, they had one tree that was sacred, that would that they would go to that tree. So that's symbolic in nature. That's why I said shamanism should be the system that people practice, in my opinion. And when I say practice it, I don't even think you can go to shamanism at this point because most sham most real shamans don't take students like that. Like shamanism really works as it's kind of blood based. And you're not gonna just, you know, go on the internet and say I'm a shaman. That's very rare that that's the case. Right? But I do think that is something that has to be put into the equation. Right? And then hence, while we now we go into time. And the three characters in Endgame and aka Infinity War that understood time were all magicians. Doctor Strange, he saw the end. <laughs> he saw, as he said, he looked at 14 million possibilities with the time stone. And what happened? He saw only one possibility out of 14 million where the Avengers won. Right? And so when that's why when in Infinity War, when he gives Thanos the time stone, and, and Iron Man's like, why the hell you gave him the time stone? Right. Especially since he said he told Iron Man, like I have 45 minutes before in that movie, I'm not giving a time to them. Oh, 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 even if you're going to die, if you're going to die, well, then that's your problem. He literally said that in the movie, but then he gives him the time stone because he saw the end. So now when you look at the pick up an end game, Thor's mother, the most powerful witch in Asgard, could tell that Thor wasn't from her time. The ancient one could tell the Hulk wasn't from her timeline. And that goes into magicians, again, old school spirituality. And old school and new school spirituality, they treat time as poetry. They have all this in you know, the past, present, futures all one. They say a bunch of pretty words. And it's pretty meaningless, to be honest. Because they tell you all these pretty words, and time is the matrix itself. Time still locks them in. All that pretty words they say, time still locked in, locks them in. But in magic, in more mature occultism, Time, the magician or the spiritual transformed individual, the initiate, the adept, whatever you want to call them, right? The tasadik, all those individuals, when they perceive time, they perceive time very differently than a regular human mind. A regular human mind perceives time and going in one direction. So today is Monday, tomorrow's Tuesday if, if I don't die. <laughs> next day is Wednesday, next day is Thursday, right? This is April, it's going to be May, it's going to be June, it's going to be July. When you're a spiritually transformed individual, you don't perceive time like that. You can perceive time going in either direction. You can perceive time from 2500 AD, or you could even perceive time from 1500 BC. So when you perceive time like that, it's a totally different understanding than a regular individual. And then this is the reason why when people have all kinds of conspiracies, why secret societies exist. Nah, be honest, when you have... When you have transformation at that level, there's no way a person who's perceiving time like that can tell it to someone else who doesn't perceive it. Someone else who's perceiving time the traditional way, this is April, next month is May, next month is June, next month is July. That person cannot understand time the way someone who says, okay, this is 2019. If I want to, I could perceive 2030. Then I could perceive 1500 BC. No, that person can't perceive time like that. So guess what? When that person can't perceive time like that, what ends up happening? What ends up happening is they have to have a secret society. They have meaning you you can't reveal the secrets to people who haven't transformed in that capacity. So that's why in the movie, the only three people who knew it was those three. And that's why 
when Dr. Strange, when Iron Man asked Dr. Strange, is this it? Dr. Strange said, I can't tell you. If I tell you, it ain't going to happen. That's exactly why he said that. So I thought that was a very interesting part of the movie. And then now we get into Iron Man, right? Iron Man itself is symbolic of the Emperor in Tarot. So Iron Man, not only is it symbolic Emperor Tarot, that's when we go from the armor itself it's symbolic to visually forget about the material aspect of the armor, right? But even from the mind, it represents because though the body is important, though the physical is important, you got to understand the mental first, right? So the the concept of of the armor is symbolic of oh, you have to transform visually to in order to protect your body so it can heal. So the armor is almost symbolic of protecting you, but at the same time, it's like a an extra coat of skin, in a sense, that all spiritualists have to go through. Meaning, all spiritualists understand that because Christian, when Christianity says we fell, it means we can't even do certain type of spiritual work, right? So when we can't even do certain type of spiritual work, yeah, we got to actually put armor on mentally. And this is why, in a sense, when you when you say with the name Yehovah, the number that Yehovah is twenty six. You just you just ten. Has five, there's two H's, right? So 10 and 10 is 20, and by six. What else is 26? Iron. You know why iron is 26? Because in one of the hidden secrets in alchemy is alchemy is sort of famous for gold and silver and mercury, right? But any real metal alchemist will tell you the most important metal in everyday life is actually iron. Mars. That's why when a, when a, when an initiate does an LBR, the LBR is Geberet, which is Mars. It's all about Mars. That's why even when you say Yod Vehe, two H's. H is He, right? That's Aries. What's Aries? What is Aries? What, what planet rules Aries? Freaking Mars. So the four letters of God, right? Two of them is the same letter and it's both Mars. That's not by coincidence because Mars is neutral. And Mars is a force that both the human, the God, the God could just mean a spiritual transform human that you perceive as royalty. Doesn't mean God the way the Greeks perceive gods. It just means the human that understands what I'm talking about, right? And transcended the limitations of being human. Both individuals have to go through Mars every day. This is why in the East, specifically in East Asia, in the Orient, martial arts was important, which is as important as spirituality. Martial arts is more important than spirituality. So I've always find it humorous when I cover MMA. And people actually think that's a downgrade over spirituality because they don't understand Mars is the reason why spirituality is in trouble because there's no, it's, it's, it's too abstract. It's too abstract. The concept of Mars is gone from it. That's, that's why spirituality is in trouble. And Iron Man or Iron is 26 atomically, which matches the, the number of God in Kabbalah, 26. So yes, gold gets the press. Silver gets depressed. Mercury gets depressed. The reason why gold and silver get the more depressed than iron, because gold and silver is symbolic of transforming yourself, resetting yourself. But once you reset, so but iron, you go, you get iron before you get gold and silver. And after you get gold and silver, you still go back to iron. So then that's why in the movie, Iron Man is the one who, who eventually wins. Who, who eventually, not wins. He eventually saves everybody, even though there's people more powerful than Iron Man. And, and symbolically as well, Iron Man was the first movie in the 10-year arc of Marvel. Iron Man 1, which came out in 2009, set all this up, which ended in 2019. That's what that was symbolic of. And so much so that even the runtime in the movie is three hours and one minute. What's three hours and one minute? Number four in numerology. Guess what? Number four. What's the, what's the, what's the, four, what's the fourth terror card? What's the number four terror card? The Emperor. In fact, there's 22 major arcanas. Two and two is four. Which that's why H appears in God twice, because it's telling you that key or that force has power in both the physical world and the spiritual world. So Mars has some, has power in both the physical world and the spiritual world. One of the one of the few planetary forces that has power in both. That's what that's symbolic of. So this is me. I, I got some requests to decode Avengers. It's so funny when I got the request. I just decode. I just gave my review. I gave it like a regular podcast. I wasn't even going to plan to decode this, but I mean, there was a lot of stuff to decode. So when I got requests for it, I just said, let me just decode this really quickly. So hope this helps. 
It's been a while. I'm going to try. Can't promise. I'm going to try to put some more videos in this channel. The Cyrus King. Until next time. Peace.